What's up guys, this is Matt and Emily from Force Fitness and Performance. Uh, today, we want to talk to you about something we see that happens a lot with our athletes, but also just with our, our general population coming in, and that's that people are really stuck in this anterior tilt position of the pelvis where their hips are dumping forward, and it puts a lot of strain on their lower back. Another way uh, we kind of term this is saying that they're stuck in extension. They're in an extended posture, and this can be most athletes are gonna be in extended posture a majority of the time. The problem is when they can't get out of it. They can't counterbalance it and it starts to become dysfunctional or even painful. And I know for me, I have a history of uh, low back pain, low back issues, and really understanding how to control my pelvis and how to get out of extension when I needed to was a huge part of my recovery process and actually helped me break through um, some big barriers for me, right? And Emily's a runner runners classically extended posture and have a hard time dealing with this too so this stuff has been challenging for you but really good for you to add into your training yeah, right really good. so we're gonna look at this like we did with the scapular winging video as a skill to be developed and take you through a series of progressions of exercises that we might use for for somebody who comes in presenting that posture really quick i want to show you let's do an active straight leg raise on the floor really quick so another thing that is, just to give you an example, if someone's in an extended posture and they're stuck here, when they go to do a straight leg raise on the ground, they'll have a really hard time flattening their back out automatically in order to get up. Because she can flatten her back, look at how much range she has. If she can't tilt that pelvis back and you stay extended, like her range of motion's gonna go there. So if you're someone who uses the functional movement screen, or any other kind of screening, you see people have a really hard time lifting one leg. Part of it could be because they don't have this, this pelvic control, okay? Not that their hamstrings are tight, that they're not able to use their core right, all right? So, first thing we're gonna do, let's go over to the turf and do these. And try to, we'll, we'll stay out of the way. We can have people running in the background. It's action shots, yeah. action shots. Look at that, there's action in the background. In real, time. real time, real life, all right. So one of the first things we're gonna start with is a position called all fours breathing. All you're gonna do is have them get their knees under their hips, hand on their shoulders. She's gonna push up as high and as hard as you can. I'm gonna teach her to try to tilt that pelvis and tuck under, really reach the scaps around. So she's getting global flexion pattern here, flexion from everywhere and learning how to breathe into her belly. So the breathing does a couple things. One, it's part of building the baseline core strength, but two, it's gonna help calm her nervous system down, get into more of a parasympathetic state, which is something we also see when people are fight or flight, they tend to be really erect, really extended, but when they are able to breathe in deeply through the diaphragm, that can help relax that out, okay? Good there. Now we're gonna stay in that position, but we're gonna add movements. So we're gonna do a rounded back deadlift. So, or a rounded back, wow, we're not doing rounded back deadlifts. That's later. <laughs> we're gonna do a rounded back rock back. Okay, so she's gonna push up into that position and now we're just gonna start moving back and forth from the hips. We, in original strength, we usually teach eyes on the horizon as part of our reset protocol, but here we're actually gonna stay rounded to counterbalance that extension posture, okay? All right, so she's getting her hips moving. She's learning how that feels a little bit more. Next up, I'm gonna see if she can have local control of that pelvis up on the wall with a spinal wave. Okay. This is something that we give a lot of people and they're like, oh my gosh, I, can, I can't even feel what this feels like. This is crazy, right? So she's in a slight squat so she can feel her full back on the wall, okay? And all we're gonna do is try to teach her to tuck her tail between her legs and roll her tailbone off the wall just a, just a couple inches and then try to set that back back on the wall one segment at a time rolling back down. That's hard for you, I can tell it's still That's hard. It's really hard. That's okay though. Okay. It just comes off in a chunk. So we're learning how to, to individualize those little pieces, those little segments of the spine. Chinese have a proverb, you are as old as your spine. It's legit, okay? Ancient wisdom. 
Okay, so I can have her do that, and then we can start doing when they start getting more comfortable, she'll curl up off the wall, and then we'll do like iso holds where she's bracing as hard as she can. And you really feel like the top of your glutes and your lower abs kick on. This is what we're starting to learn. In order to tilt the pelvis, you have to engage those two things. Once she's got this on the wall, we're gonna load it just by having her lay down on the ground. Okay, so we're gonna come over. In the beginning, we'll get her a little bit of an anchor. I'll have you grab on here or use a band. You can stay trained on her, Ben. So if you're having trouble finding it from here, what we see is a lot of people will use their lats a ton in order to assist this movement in the beginning. Relax the feet down, knees right above the hips. She's gonna try to curl that just off the ground. And the motion is coming from tilting that pelvis. What we see a lot of people do is shove the knees in. Now, if you're gonna do this, what, they're, what people are trying to do are either use, do this for two things. One is they're creating momentum to help pull them up rather than having to control that because they're too weak down there. But they're also shortening the lever. So if you're shortening the lever and then trying to do that little tilt but still drive the movement from the pelvis, that's fine. That makes sense. And then you can make this harder by then lengthening the lever. Same thing with the arms. If, I, if she's having a hard time getting it from there, I might have her grab on the band instead and pull down. And that's making her less extended up top and putting more of the focus on her core. And that looks pretty good, okay? From here, we're gonna add iso holds again from the lift, uh, deep inhales and exhales, because that's still setting the core up, okay? So this is more of our active positioning. Let's show planks and dead bug breathing, okay? We can take this even to like our most common exercise in the plank. And this is something we feel like a lot of people miss in a plank is plank is, is anti-extension. So it's a chance to get out of extension from the pelvis. Most people are so concerned about the three points of contact with like head, shoulders, and hips that they miss this pelvis rolling back and creating more of a, a flat back or even a slightly flexed lower back from here. Okay, so I'm gonna really, I'll even help people get in that position. And then she can do her breathing there. That's challenging, right? or we can flip over onto our back. Another exercise that tons of, we see tons of people prescribe, but they don't necessarily get the, the benefit of the anti-extension as much out of is a dead bug. Because in the dead bug, we want to roll that pelvis back a little bit to, oh yeah, she's already shaking now, okay? Roll that pelvis back a little bit. So the tailbone's just coming off the ground and now she's engaging her core. We can breathe from there or we could start extending opposite arm and leg, but telling her, don't worry about going to the floor, keep that, tailbone off the ground so you're getting in that good position. Cool? All right, so from here, we can start making it even more dynamic. And for me, for example, you mind if I do this one? Yeah, go for it. So this was like a great litmus test for me is can you do a hanging leg raise, right? So like people have a hard time doing that leg lift off the ground like in the straight leg raise we tested. So most times those people are gonna be able to do a knee tuck because it's short in the lever, they're not really extending, right? But they'll have a really hard time doing straight legs. And once I got the ability to tilt my pelvis, all of a sudden that range of motion was there when before it was here. So it's just another way to load that kind of leg raise position and check whether you have control of that pelvic tilt under a higher and higher loads. Okay, so you can see how we're kind of building the motor control, starting from static positions, building to more loaded, uh, static unloaded positions, to some motor control positions, then to loaded static positions, loaded static or loaded motor control positions. Okay, kind of back and forth from that static to dynamic to build the skill up. Ideally, you'd start someone the highest progression that they can show you that they're doing the thing you want to do. So you don't need to start all the way at the bottom. You can, you can start up as high as you can in that chain. And then for a little bonus, stick around and we will show you our major cue for deadlifts that helps people learn not to overextend their back in deadlifts. We'll be back in a sec. All right, so really quick session, deadlift session. One of the, the biggest things we see with people who, again, can't control their pelvis or stuck in extension, they might be really strong in this position, but they tend to over arch and that can lead to issues downstream. 
uh, or they might not even be able to, to deadlift because it just feels painful to get in that position. So when we cue it, first thing we're gonna do is go soft knees a little bit. So she's allowing a little bit more room for her hips to move. And then she's gonna drive her butt back like she's slamming the car door shut with her butt because her arms are full of groceries. Now here's the big cue. Go ahead and go down. Her ribs are staying down and in a little bit. So she's still got a flat back or slightly extended, but she's not in that really extended posture. But the key is right here. When she lifts, most people think of deadlift as a lift or a pull, it's a push. You should be pushing your feet through the floor. That's the driver of the action coming up. When you don't do that, people pull and then they throw themselves into that more extended posture and just continue to reinforce extended postures throughout. Now it still is more of an extension position. Squats are usually more extended, deadlifts are more extended. So those exercises we showed before are great to superset with an exercise like this because it will help break that extension pattern, reset the nervous system, and make sure you're not just getting stuck in one, uh, one position all day. Cool?